hopefully my research will culminate in the detection of gravitational waves. And for pulsar timing arrays, we can detect gravitational waves that have a period of 1 over the total time of observation of the pulsar. So for example, if we're monitoring a pulsar for 10 years, we are sensitive to gravitational waves with a period of 10 years, and so that's a frequency of around 3 nanohertz, and that's very long frequencies. So these gravitational waves come from supermassive black holes when they've just started merging. So when they just get close to each other and start going around, but they're very, very early on in their merger phase. Gravitational waves have not been directly detected yet. We know that they exist because Hulse and Taylor, two scientists in the 80s, found a double neutron, uh, neutron star system. And one of the neutron stars was a pulsar. And they monitored the system over many years. And there were two hypotheses. One, that gravitational waves existed and the other that they didn't. So one was essentially a Newtonian idea, no gravitational waves, and the other one was the Einsteinian theory, so there are gravitational waves. Now, should gravitational waves exist, we would expect there to be a characteristic shrinking of the orbit because you're losing energy due to this gravitational radiation. And so you expect the orbit to shrink a little bit as they merge. Whereas, if you believe in Newton's theory and think Einstein is wrong, they're not emitting gravitational waves, and they should just really stay in the same kind of orbit. So they monitored the system over around 10 years, and they found that the gravitational wave prediction model was the best model and predicted the results to within half a percent. And so Hulse and Taylor then won the Nobel Prize in 1993 for the first indirect detection of gravitational waves. But because their effect, their direct effect on things on the Earth is so small, it's so difficult to measure, we still haven't been able to directly detect them yet. But the race is on. So there's not only pulsar timing arrays that can detect gravitational waves directly. There's also the laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory called LIGO and there's two of those in the US, and one is called Virgo, and, and that's one, that one's in Italy. And they can detect higher frequency gravitational waves. So they can detect gravitational waves from neutron star mergers, which are in our galaxy or in a close by galaxy. And they can detect gravitational waves to around one kilohertz, whereas pulsar timing arrays can detect these very long wavelength gravitational waves, so in the nanohertz regime. So there's, they're completely complementary experiments, they have different sources, and they're sensitive to different frequencies of gravitational waves.